We sure have come a very long way in this course, and this is the last video of the term. And I hope you've enjoyed the class. I have certainly enjoyed my interaction with you guys and have appreciated all your hard work um, this semester. I want to talk finally about what art was doing in Italy during the 14th century. Now, most of the medieval art um, looks very flat. Remember those frescoes from the Byzantine um, period where they were very two-dimensional, very stylized, um, almost a sense that artists forgot classical Greek and classical Rome and returned to more stylistic, two-dimensional figures. But in the 14th century, we see a change. We see a movement back to the classical past. Um, to artists that began to break from the Byzantine tradition and artists that will become then precursors to the Renaissance. Um, and two of these artists that we're going to look at are Cimabue and Giotto. Um, many people believe that Cimabue influenced Giotto later. Um, and with Cimabue, who was the leading painter in Florence at the time, we see him begin to seek realism and form once again. And with Giotto, we'll see that quest for realism continuing and also a sense of depth in his work. But let's look at a piece by Cimabue first. This is called Madonna Enthroned. And it's um, behind an altar in a church. It's pretty big, 12 feet by 7 feet. And you see here he is a trying to push toward three-dimensionality. Some of the angels are foregrounded, and some you see are in the background. So not everything is two-dimensional. Even though there's still more of a flatness to this um, than we'll see in the Renaissance, there's still that push toward it. Um, there's also a movement toward more realistic facial expressions, at least with Mary here in, in this one. But where you really see this push toward realism that will become a hallmark of the Renaissance is in Giotto. And he does succeed in creating three-dimensional depth here and in the next slide that we'll look at. Um, these two paintings by Giotto, this one and the next one, really take on the feeling of realism, calmness, and balance that will characterize Renaissance masters like da Vinci. Um, Giotto really worked to create drama. And the scene here you see is of the Virgin Mary's parents. Joachim and Anna. Separately, uh, Mary's parents received angelic revelation that they would have a child. And that child, of course, turned out to be Mary. And this is the moment where they are rushing to tell each other, and they meet on this threshold. And you can see the affection, the humanity um, in this painting. These will be hallmarks of the Renaissance, a focus on the human, um, even in divine subjects. And Giotto is certainly leading the way here. In this next painting, you see another dramatic episode. You see this as St. Francis renouncing his worldly goods. And St. Francis was a very important religious figure in the Middle Ages. Um, he was born into a very wealthy family. He was taken for ransom, and during that experience, he had a major religious conversion. And he decided that it would be his goal in life to deny all material um, pleasures, material wealth, and to travel throughout the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
This, you can see, is the moment, according to Giotto, when St. Francis is renouncing his worldly goods. You have a naked St. Francis being covered by a priest, and then you have his father here not necessarily happy about what has gone on. Like other Renaissance painters that will come after Giotto, you have a clear division of space, much as we saw in the classical world. Um, and you've got people looking like people once again, not the stylization of the Byzantine and early medieval periods. So it's important to see how cyclical things are. We went from very early art that was flat and stylized through the classical period where there was a focus on um, painting and or depicting people um, realistically. And then we went through the Byzantine period where once again things were flattened and stylized and now we're back sort of reclaiming that classical past. And so I hope you've enjoyed um, the course. Um, and if you're interested in continuing your study of humanities, um, the second part of the course begins with the Renaissance and goes through the present day, studying the same types of things, art, architecture, philosophy, music, um, literature. So I would love to have you back. Um, and again, I hope you have um, learned at least a couple of things um, through taking this course.